Now let's talk about the unconventional modes, or sometimes referred to as the secondary modes of ventilation. First we have control mode ventilation, or CMV. This is a mode where the ventilator delivers a preset tidal volume at a set time triggered frequency. So basically the ventilator controls both the rate and the tidal volume which means that it's in total control of the minute ventilation. This mode should only be used on patients who are fully sedated and have been administered neuromuscular blocking agents. This is also one of the biggest hazards of using this mode as well because since the patient is fully dependent on the ventilator for ventilation and oxygenation, it could be devastating if they were to become disconnected. Next we have APRV or airway pressure release ventilation. This is a mode in which two levels of CPAP are applied with an intermittent release phase for spontaneous breaths. So basically in this mode you will set a high pressure, low pressure, a high time, and a low time. If that sounds confusing, no worries, we will go into much more detail in another video. But the main thing I want you to remember about APRV is that this mode is often recommended to improve oxygenation and treat refractory hypoxemia, which that means that it's good to recommend this mode for ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, for an acute lung injury, and in some cases for atelectasis. Next we have MMV, or mandatory minute ventilation. This is a feature of some ventilators that causes an increase in the mandatory breaths that are delivered when the patient's spontaneous breathing level becomes inadequate. So basically, if the patient's spontaneous breathing decreases, the ventilator compensates in order to make sure that a safe, minimal minute ventilation is delivered. MMV is often an additional function of the SIMV mode and is intended to prevent hypercapnia. Next we have IRV, or Inverse Ratio Ventilation. This is a mode that uses an inverse IE ratio to improve oxygenation and gas exchange. It's been shown to decrease shunting, improve VQ mismatching, and decrease dead space ventilation. This mode is commonly recommended for patients with Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, aka ARDS. This mode actually causes auto beep which usually when you think of auto peep or intrinsic peep, that's normally not a good thing, right? Well, in this mode, the auto peep is actually what helps improve the patient's oxygenation and it reduces shunting. So remember that the two modes that are used to treat patients with ARDS are airway pressure release ventilation and inverse ratio ventilation. Next up, we have pressure regulated volume control or PRVC. This is a mode of ventilation that provides volume controlled breaths with the lowest pressure possible. It does so by altering the flow and inspiratory time. This mode is used to keep the peak airway pressure at the lowest possible level. This mode is volume cycled and can be patient triggered or time triggered. Next we have PAV or proportional assist ventilation. This is a mode of ventilation where the machine uses variable pressure to provide pressure support for the patient's spontaneous breaths. The level of pressure support is adjusted depending on the patient's work of breathing. PAV can either be pressure triggered or flow triggered and the breathing cycle ends once the patient's volume or flow demands are met. And one thing to keep in mind about this mode is that if the patient's lungs show rapid improvement over distension or barrel trauma could occur because too much pressure would be delivered. Next up we have ASV or adaptive support ventilation. This is a mode that changes the number of mandatory breaths and pressure support level according to the patient's breathing pattern. Next we have APC or adaptive pressure control. This is a pressure controlled mode that utilizes a closed loop control of the pressure setting in order to maintain a minimum delivered tidal volume. With that said, in this mode, 
the delivery title volume will vary depending on the patient's lung compliance. Next we have VAPS or Volume Assured Pressure Support. This is a mode of ventilation that provides a stable tidal volume by incorporating inspiratory pressure support ventilation along with conventional volume assisted cycles. This mode is only available on certain ventilators. One thing about this mode is that it causes prolonged inspiratory time, so patients with an obstructed disease should be monitored closely in order to prevent air trapping or other cardiovascular effects. Next up we have NAVA or Neurally Adjusted Ventilatory Assist. This one's pretty cool. It's a mode that uses the patient's electrical activity of the diaphragm to guide the functionality of the ventilator. A catheter that has electrodes is positioned in the patient's esophagus at the level of the diaphragm and that is how the electrical activity is picked up from the phrenic nerves. Then the ventilator uses this information in order to adequately ventilate the patient. Next up is automatic tube compensation or ATC. While technically in my opinion this is not a mode, I did want to mention it briefly because this is a setting on some ventilators and it offsets and compensates for the airflow resistance that is imposed by the endotracheal tube or by the artificial airway. And last but most certainly not least is high frequency oscillatory ventilation or AFOV. This is a mode or a type of mechanical ventilation that delivers very small tidal volumes at an extremely fast rate which minimizes the chances of a lung injury. This mode has been shown to improve oxygenation in severe cases such as with refractory hypoxemia. Now briefly we need to mention the settings for this mode. When making adjustments to settings in high frequency ventilation, the ventilation can be increased by increasing the power or amplitude setting or by decreasing the frequency. Ventilation can be decreased by decreasing the power or amplitude setting or by increasing the frequency. Oxygenation can be increased by increasing the mean airway pressure setting or by increasing the FIL2 and vice versa if you want to decrease the oxygenation for some reason. This mode is also indicated to provide mechanical ventilatory support in neonates with conditions such as a congenital diaphragmatic hernia, diffuse alveolar disease, and pulmonary hypoplasia. But we will talk more about that in another video. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to dive deeper and learn more about this topic, be sure to check out some of the other videos that we have here on our channel. Also, you can go to respiratorytherapyzone.com where we have a ton of free study guides, practice questions, and other resources that I think you will enjoy. I'll drop links to everything you need right below this video down in the description. And if you want to support the channel, be sure to drop a like on this video and you might as well go ahead and click the subscribe button while you're down there. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. That's it for this one. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.